Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Join us for tonight's tale about a wandering soldier who shows a king and his daughters that one man's problem is another's good fortune. The Dancing Princesses. Long ago, in a land not too far away, there lived six beautiful princesses, all my daughters. And since the death of their dear mother, my beloved wife, Queen Ethel, they were my sole responsibility. The girls delighted in merriment and were, of course, prime targets for the advances of young men of peerage. You can just imagine my predicament. Wishing to spare the rod but not spoil the child, I was forced to take precautions. Good evening, daughters. Good evening, father. Eight o'clock. Time for bed. Yes, father. Yes, father. Yes, father. <laughs> How are your studies going, Janetta? Very well, father. And your pity point, Winetta. I'm almost finished, Father. And your roses, Musetta? I'm melting, Father. Are you? Did you ride today, Coretta Dinetta? Yes, thank you, Father. And what did you do today, my little Loretta? Oh, mm, today was simply marvelous. Well, first of all, I had blueberry muffins with orange marmalade. You know how much I love orange marmalade? Yes. Well, I became slightly ill on it, I'm afraid, so I had to skip Latin. But the teacher said it's okay, because I did so yesterday, so I could go into town, so I went all the way into town in a carriage and yes, back. Well, thank, and you, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. I'm glad you had such a full day. Good night, my dear. Good night, Father. Right, now all of you, lay yourselves down to sleep. Yes, yes Father. Father. Uh, 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 uh. And pray the Lord your souls to keep. Yes, yes Father. Father. <clears throat> oh, uh, Father. Hmm? Could you leave that? We let it burn all night. It's such a comfort to us. Is it? Oh, yes, yes, Father. Yes. Thank you. Well, very well. Thank you, Father. Well, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. Oh, Ethel, if only you'd left me with sons, I would have known what to do. But daughters, they're a constant puzzle to me. francs for oranges, they're going to squeeze me dry. And this, 2,000 francs for muskets, there hasn't been a, a shot fired in this kingdom for years. They can see a king coming a mile away. And, well, I don't believe this. Just, just read that for me, would you? 
Now, don't tremble, man. Just read. Five, 5,400 francs for shoes. Shoes? Highway robbery. I'll have the royal cobbler's head for this. Where is he? Uh, you sent for me, Your Majesty. What is the meaning of this preposterous bill? Ooh. Uh. Is the bill for the princess's shoes, sire? Shoes? No one can wear this many shoes in a lifetime. Well, apparently your daughters can, sire. Look, here is an itemized account. Six new pairs of dance slippers every day for the past month. That's 12 new shoes per day at 30 francs a pair, or 15 francs a piece. Whichever way you look at it, the total cost comes to... 5,400 francs, precisely. A new pair of dance slippers each, every day, for the past month? I'm afraid so, sire. They leave the worn-out slippers outside their door after it is unlocked in the morning. But they're bolted in at night. They can't get out to go dancing. Or can they? Stuart! The door remains locked till seven each morning, sire. I, I swear. Perhaps they cut a rug within the confines of their chambers. Oh, nonsense. Sire. They're as quiet as mice. Oh. Now, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Come along, cobbler. Yes, sir. To the bank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about it's that. A... Oh, clever duck. I made those just yesterday, sire. I've had enough of this puzzle. Everybody decent? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, father. Yes, father. Oh. Good morning, father. Morning. Morning, morning, father. morning, father. Morning, father. Don't good morning me. I demand to know. Why these dance slippers <gasps> are worn through? Hmm? Where do you go at night? Hmm? Are you tripping the light fantastic behind my royal back? Hmm? Janetta, you're the eldest. Speak. I can't imagine why our slippers are wearing out so quickly, Father. Hmm? Oh, it must be, it must be our feet tearing them so quickly as they grow. Yes, we do yes. nothing but sleep at night. Isn't that true? This is right. We never do anything but sleep at night. Would you, would you, hold your hush. Come on. Yes, They think they can fool me. You're right. There is mischief afoot, sire. <laughs> right. Since you all refuse to explain this expensive mystery, perhaps I should search my kingdom for willing detectives. What do you mean? Oh, I'm sure I can find some prince who would love to solve this case and in return marry one of you. And inherit my kingdom. Yes, yes, one of you will make a very handsome prize. Come, mischief on foot. Naughty princesses. Well, this is a fine kettle of fish. Now, what are we going to do? Whoever thought our shoes would give us away? Well, I'm too young to get married. What makes you think a prince would pick you anyway? Well, what makes you, you think are too young I'm to get married? Hush! I, for one, will be no prince's door prize. Let them cozy up to father. Not one of them will discover our secret. I have a plan. <laughs> As I had threatened, word was sent throughout the land that any prince who could discover the princess's secret should be allowed to marry the royal daughter of his choice and stand as my, the king's, rightful heir. That's a fine supper for a big, healthy fellow. Ooh. One man's turnip is another man's treat. 
tell me, soldier, what's a warrior like you doing in a peaceful kingdom like this? I was wounded in the service of my country and can fight no more. Want to see my scar? Oh, I believe you. Tell me, since you are a veteran then, surely you must have a pension to ease your burden. No, alas, my king lost his war, and with it is gold. I was discharged with, what, six pennies to my name. Oh, then I won't beg your kindness. No, no, no. Please, allow me. One man's gift is another man's reward. Thanks. Where are you bound? I really don't know. Sometimes I think maybe I'd like to settle down and fall in love. Perhaps I should try my luck with those princesses, huh? Oh, then I can return the favor. Here, take this cloak. It doesn't look like much, but it has the power to make whoever wears it invisible. An invisible cloak? Now, what do I need this for? Think, man. To tail the dancing princesses. You can follow them anywhere and never be seen. So the king's darlings go dancing at night? Well, I must be gone. Good luck to you. Wait, old woman. How do I gain entrance to the palace? Oh, I almost forgot. When you get to the palace, don't drink the wine. <laughs> what a dotty old bat she is. Invisible cloaks. Dancing princesses. Maybe she bewitched me. She could be an old witch. Then again, maybe she charmed me. She could be a good fairy. Saints preserve me. I'll know for sure. is a dud. Where's my arm? Good King Wenceslas, where's my arm? My arm is gone. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. Invisible cloak. Take a good fairy over an old witch any day. As the good soldier set off to find the palace, there came to the castle a prince of sorts, determined to solve the mystery of the worn dance slippers, and of course to have himself a bride and an empire in the bargain. Yes. Now I see here that you come from Upper Windbow. Yes, we severed from Lower Winbow after the Watercress Wars. The best families went upper, and the worst went lower, naturally. Naturally. Ah, here come my beauties. Ah, come along. Now, come along, my daughters. I want to introduce you. This is Prince Heinrich, de Vries Hamilton Lloyd, Fifth Earl of Shrewsbury, second base for Chipping Norton, and Crown Prince of Winbow. Did I get that right? Upper Winbow. Oh, upper, yes, yes, naturally. Ladies, up, up, oh, please. Uh, he looks like an Easter egg. <laughs> Every day's a holiday in Upper Winbow. Henrik, you, uh, you know the rules, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You have three days in which to find out why my daughters wear out their dance slippers each night. Now, you will occupy a room adjoining the princess's bedchamber. Uh, 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 uh. The better to keep an eye on them, that's all. And remember, no, uh, hanky panky. Naturally. Naturally. Well, let's settle in. Well, come along, I'll show you to your chamber. <laughs> Smart enough to try 
Eli's head is winning a kingdom. <laughs> he oh. certainly isn't the prince of my dreams. Oh, no, he's more like a nightmare. <laughs> and lavender and lace. <laughs> oh, sister, this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> that night, a great banquet was held for Prince Heinrich. Little did I know that when it came time for the final toast, Jeanetta poured a magic sleeping potion into the prince's goblet. Okay. Let's toast to your success. Oh. 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 Two hundred. Two hundred. Yes, yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Do you really want me to win, fair lady? Oh, God. Have I told you yet how... Oh. <laughs> how beautiful I think you are. Several times. <laughs> My sweet... Janetta. 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 I'd like nothing better <laughs> than to gaze in your eyes. Oh. For the rest of my life. Oh. And inherit my father's lands and fortunes. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Ah. Oh, uh, wake up, Heinrich. Mm -hmm. Up, 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 up. up. <laughs> it's time for me to be clever and crafty and wise, Your Majesty. Ooh. By your leave, Your Majesty. Hi, 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 I have a mystery to solve. Thank you. Good night. Heinrich. <laughs> Prince Heinrich was no match for Janetta. Her magic potion did the trick, much to the amusement of her sisters. That night and every night he slept like a baby and had no idea where my daughters danced. On the third day, Prince Heinrich was promptly sent back to Windbauer, uh, Upper Windbauer, for he had failed, naturally. More princes followed, but they were just as unsuccessful, I'm afraid. One day, fate took a hand and led the good soldier to the royal cobbler's shop. Excuse me, sir. I was wondering, could you please fix this heel on my... No, not now, not door? now. Can't you see? I'm busy. I've got to get these slippers to the palace by five o'clock. Let's see, that's two pairs at six and a did, half million, did, eight, one did, pair did, at did, seven. Did, did you say the palace? Did you say the yes, palace? Yes, yes, yes. That's usually where princesses live. Oh. Oh, you look at what the cat tried did. Listen, I know we just met, but I was wondering, could you take me with you into the palace? You? <laughs> If I took you to the palace, the king would have my head. I know I don't look like much, but I'm the man who can cool the king's quandary. What makes you think you can do what princes have failed to do? One man's prince is another man's pauper. Oh, well put, and good day. Look, cobbler, I have a means whereby no one will ever see you lead me into the palace. What's in it for me if I should take you to the palace and give you a crack at a wife in a kingdom, eh? I'll tell you what. When I win the prize, I'll see that you're rewarded mm. with a pension and a title. How does that sound, Sir Cobbler? Sir Cobbler. Lord Cobbler? Lord Cobbler. Very well, dreamer. Pick up those slippers. We are going to uh, the palace. <laughs> All right, soldier, this is the end of the line. Here is your precious palace. I'm afraid here's where we must part company. No need for that. Dear Lord, where are you? Is this some kind of a joke? Lead on, cobbler. I have a date with the six princesses. I knew I shouldn't have stayed up all night making those nine now. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> Give me those shoes. Materialize at once. Uh -huh. I do like dirty soldiers better than a ghost. I'm sorry, cobbler. I didn't mean to frighten you. I had a difficult time believing in magical cloaks myself. Oh, if I were you, I'd keep this cloak under wraps. Do you know there are princes who would do more than wish for a cloak like that? You worry too much, cobbler. Keep your fingers crossed. You see, when the great waters receded, the earth was left dry and the kingdoms were created. But kingdoms are made by men, father, not dry spells. Now, um, we are here, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, if what you say is true, then our kingdom should be bordered by two oceans. Yes, you have a point. <laughs> You know, your mother, God rest her soul, would be so proud of you, Janetta. Mm. Oh, you are so clever. Oh, oh, not another prince. We shall see. Your Majesty, I, uh, I've come to answer the proclamation and try my hand at winning a bride and the kingdom. <laughs> well, that's very eloquent, soldier, but I'm afraid this offer is limited to princes only. But why? Uh, why, Father? This man looks like he has an honest, if dirty, face. No princes have succeeded thus far. What harm is there in letting the poor man try? Now, since when have you become a champion of this contest? Oh, take pity on him, Father. Looks like he could use three days of luxury in a palace. Oh, please, Jeanette. Uh, no, no need to reprimand us, sire. For one man's insult is another man's compliment. <laughs> yes, I like you, soldier. All right, you may stay. But if at the end of three days you haven't solved my little mystery, then you must be gone. Agreed? Agreed. Good. Tend to him, Janetta. Yes, father. Thank you, sire. Well, it will be nice having a guest who is not a prince for a change. Uh, shall I show you the grounds? I would never refuse a guide so fair. You may be in need of a bath, but your manners are impeccable. My mother taught me well. Did she also teach you how to use soap? My mother washed me every Saturday, whether... I needed it or not. <laughs> my, my. Such hygiene in the lower classes. Allow me. You know, there is a popular ballad that warns young ladies against the charms of men at arms. I would think a woman of your wit isn't so easily swayed by suitors. Most... Women, most women of your age are already married. I take that as a compliment, soldier. <laughs> My father has been trying to marry me off for years. I am not marrying kind. Oh, really? I would have thought otherwise. No, I have no patience for hearts and flowers and young men who brag about this victory or that. There's more to life than romance. That night, after a hearty meal, I escorted the soldier to his room next door to the princesses. We talked man to man about uh, this and that, and he told me stories of his adventures. I found myself growing to like him, for he was wise in the ways of the world. He had cleverly followed the old woman's advice and purposely avoided the wine and the potion at dinner. But Janetta, not to be outdone, came to his door with a bedtime uh, snack. Oh, yes, resourcefulness runs in our family. Yeah? Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> and to what do I owe the honor of this visit? Hmm? Well, my sisters and I thought you might like some cookies and milk before retiring. Cookies and milk? 
Hmm. Oh, my favorite. Hmm. Is that your father there in the window? My father? <laughs> I just love cookies and milk before I retire. Well, I'll just take these now, and I'll see you in the morning, all right? All right. Good night. Night. <gasps> I knew he would drink it. <laughs> the coast is clear then? As soon as Father locks us in, we are free to go. <laughs> Good night, daughters. Have you seen my diamonds? In the jewelry box, I think. Loretta, huh? which do you prefer, the pink or the yellow? The, um, the yellow. The pink makes you look like a cupcake. Oh, oh thanks a lot! Oh, who took my hairbrush? Nobody took anything. <sighs> it's right. You <laughs> left it. <laughs> Janetta, something isn't right. I feel funny. All right, let us check on our sleeping soldier. with a beard who's never bad-tempered and who loves to go swimming. The man of my dreams is a prince with a heart who takes in small animals and gives to the poor. The man of my dreams is a prince with great courage who wins all his wars protects little people. The man of my dreams is a prince and a sailor who travels the oceans and never gets sick. The man of my dreams is a prince and a poet who is very romantic and dances divinely. The soldier followed the princesses through a dark tunnel. Not one of them suspected his presence, for the invisible cloak hid him from their eyes completely. But mistakes do happen.
One by one, the princesses were met at the edge of the forest by six handsome princes, each in a golden gondola, waiting to ferry them downstream. The moon shone brightly, casting a silvery glow on the company, matched only by the radiant smiles on the young girls' faces as they floated off into their own private dreams. The invisible soldier watched in wonder as the princesses departed and finally hopped aboard the last boat to the bewilderment of Loretta and her escort. I can't think why the boat's so heavy tonight, princess. Well, it isn't me. Nothing is right tonight. Everything feels so strange. Soldier made himself at ease in the glittering company, sampling the delicacies. As the evening progressed, he derived much pleasure from his invisibility and played more than one prank on the unknowing guests, even occasionally taking his turn on the dance floor. <laughs> but the next morning, the soldier was in great spirits. He never let on that he had discovered the princess's little secret. But why should he? He was thoroughly enjoying his stay at the palace. Did you have a good night, soldier? Uh, Jeanette, have a pass of bacon, would you please? Oh. I dreamt I was fighting the Peplum Wars, sire. Oh, yes. That was a sad time in our history. Uh, more orange juice, please. Alas, all wars are sad, sire, and should be avoided, I think. I agree. Do you have any clues for me this morning? Do you know why I'm spending so much money on dance slippers? No, I'm afraid not, sire. You see, I was very tired from my journey yesterday, and I slept like a log. May I have the muffins, please? Any plans for today? I thought I might spend it with your daughter, sir. Strictly in a research capacity, of course. You see, I must get to know your daughters for two reasons. First, of course, to find out where they might go at night. And the second, to find out which one I might choose for my bride. <laughs> Yes, you're very sure of yourself. That I am, sire. That I most definitely am. Father, do we not have any say in this at all? Yes. Yes, of course. Just tell me where you all go at night, and I'll call a halt to everything. Hmm? Yes, I thought so. Soldier, you may spend as much time as you like with my daughters. 
And I want each and every one of you to give him your complete cooperation. Well, uh, <clears throat> within reason, of course. So the soldier set about getting to know each of my daughters. And in so doing, he captured their hearts as well. That's your third king. I'd better watch out. You're really fun. You certainly aren't dull like all those princes. Maybe that's because I'm not a prince. Do you think I'm pretty? Do I think you're pretty? I think you're very pretty. Would you pick me to marry? I might. Except that I'm a little bit older than you, and I think that maybe you should be with some young, handsome man. Someone who can keep up with you. I should? Definitely. King me. <laughs> Loretta fell for the way he played the checkers. And I should have known Winetta would weaken for any handyman who could fix her embroidery hoop. Musetta? <laughs> well, she succumbed immediately to his green thumb. And Coretta and Donetta, I'm sorry to say, fought over him like two kittens with a catnip mouse. Janetta alone remained to be conquered. My sister seemed charmed by your lack of refinement. <laughs> and you are not. Charm like beauty is too often skin deep, don't you agree? I truly don't mean to offend you. I truly don't. I'm only trying to understand why why you and your sisters feel compelled to disobey a father whom you obviously love so much. After mother died, father grieved for years and refused to marry again. And as the eldest, can you not help him to try to understand what it means to grow up a woman? I try. I do, but he is stubborn. Something wrong? No. So, this is all beginning to make sense to me now. I don't think it is your place to pry into our family affairs. Family affairs, these are things I must know if I'm to become the king's son-in-law. Son-in-law? Soldier, down. you presume too much. Calm down, calm down. I, I apologize. I only mean... No, 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 no. No, enough. I, for one, will be really happy to see you leave tomorrow. As they say, you may lose the battle, but still win the war. That night, the soldier decided to follow the princesses once more, just for the fun of it. And, of course, to watch Janetta dance in the moonlight. did not end well for anyone. My girls experienced a frightful scare, and the good soldier caught a dreadful cold. <coughs> a bear! Oh, I think it's behind us. Oh, 
behind us. We better move quickly. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry about your bed, Janetta. I'll get the royal carpenter to have a look at it. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, good morning, soldier. Caught a chill, have you? I'm afraid so, sire. I left my window open last night. Well, easy to do in a castle. I'll have my physician prescribe something for you. <laughs> you, you, you are, are too kind, sir. Bad dream. Berries, please. Well, I'm sorry to get down to business, but this is your last day, soldier. Do you know where my daughters go at night? Most certainly do. Your daughters go dancing with six princes in a kingdom under the ground. <gasps> is this true? Hmm? Winetta. Musetta. Coretta Donetta. Loretta. Ginetta. <gasps> oh. Sisters, behold your bear. <gasps> Have you any proof of this underground kingdom? Yes, sir, I do. I brought with me a silver branch and a jeweled goblet. Would someone be kind enough to explain this to me? What the soldier is saying is true, Father. We go dancing at night in a dream world come true. What is wrong with the real world you live in? Sire, if I may speak, if you, would, if you would only trust your daughters and give them a little freedom, rather than lock them in at night like birds in a cage, you might see at how grown up they can be. Have I been too protective of you, my little ones? We are not so little anymore, Father. No. No, you're not. I suppose I was trying to cling on to the happy memories when you were. Little girls. And um, your mother was still with us. <laughs> she always knew what to do. But um, being a father alone, trying to raise daughters, it's, it's not an easy task. So many things to consider. So many things can go wrong. Forgive me, I am. I just hope I, <laughs> I haven't scarred you for life. That's all. Oh. Oh. Please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, so do you. You seem to have solved my puzzle and mended my family. I'm a man of my word. Which one of my daughters do you want as your bride? Well, if I were to choose, sire, I would choose Janetta, for she is the eldest. Well, don't do me any favor, soldier. Now, don't be crabby, Janetta, just because he outsmarted you. Although all your daughters are lovely, Janetta, to me, is the most beautiful, for she is the wisest. And. I fell in love with her, sire, hopelessly, the moment I laid eyes on her. Well, let's settle it. Not quite, sire. You see, it has to be Janetta's decision. Do you love me, Janetta? Will you be my wife? Yes, yes, yes. I do.
do love you. And I will marry you. <laughs> On one condition. Name it. That you tell me how you discovered our secret. Your secret? Well... I discovered your secret... With this! <laughs> A present from an old friend. You were aided by a witch! Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> One man's witch is another man's good fairy. So the good soldier and Janetta were married. Everyone rejoiced, for nowhere could be found a more perfect couple. Now I could rest easy, for after seeing the error of my overprotective ways, I knew that although my daughters would never forget the princess of their dreams, I had made certain that each one would now be free to find true love with a prince among men. One down and five to go, eh, Ethel?